Okay, today we're gonna do a little landscape um, in pen. So do some pen practice here. We're gonna do a little landscape. <clears throat> so a lot of times when I um, have somebody just starting out, it I like to do a little bit of a pencil sketch, a really, really light pencil sketch. Uh, the thing you have to be careful about is that your pencil needs to be very minimal and light because you're gonna wanna get rid of it. So as we start to put things in, put things in with ink, we'll start to get rid of some of the pen. Um, now, of course you could do this sketch real light with pen and then start building from there with straight pen, um, but in this case, I did a little bit of a sketch with pencil first. And so now um, we can go through and we can start just building up detail with ink, okay? So I'm gonna start off with our house here. Come in and start adding um, some details. And here's the thing with, um, with the pen as you're coming in and sketching, always, always add things in very, very lightly and then darken a little bit by a little bit as you go, okay? You end up with just a little bit better result. And when you, once you put ink over the pencil, it's gonna be a lot harder to get it off. So if your pencil is still kind of showing as you put the, the um, outline in, then I would erase it or remove it as kind of as you go. And I'm giving this sort of a thin base. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm just going to darken like stripes kind of, so that it looks like a corrugated metal roof. This is like a little cabin. And I just want to give the feel of a, of that metal roof so I don't have to be super super detailed but I do want to try to keep them evenly spaced and um, matching the angle of either side of the roof okay <clears throat> so my window here we're gonna make the window dark like it's it, it's dark inside this barn or cabin or whatever. To me, it kind of almost looks barn-like and then a little cabin down over here. Um, but this window, it's dark inside there, but I am going to do it by layers and not just quickly make it look dark. And then I kind of drew in two small windows, but I'm going to come in and draw in more of a big window, I think. I'm just changing my mind a little bit here. I'm gonna give it a little window frame. And when I do the window frame, I just try to keep it even all the way around the square. And then I want it to be, uh, have a cross pane. Okay, so I have the walls. I'm gonna go ahead and get my, my hill kind of drawn in here. Really, really lightly again. And kind of come in and do my, my door. And the, the frame I have coming around the door. 
little barn doors here. Or <coughs> wide frame or whatever. And again, the door inside the barn is dark. So I'm just gonna shade the door black here. Not black, but dark value. But again, I go over it and I do layers. And I'll put in the first couple layers and then move away and just leave it like that. Knowing that most likely I'm going to darken it more, but holding off because you can always add pin, but you can't take it away. Oh, you know, this window taking out the, the panes because I meant to draw it in so the, that the cross members could stay white and my window or my barn inside is dark right so I'm just gonna cover those up okay so on this barn I want um, like wood slats so I am going to start to draw in wood slats here. And I'm trying to keep them parallel to the bottom of the barn and parallel to each other as they come up. Run them across the front here. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna make sure my ink dries really nice before I start to erase anything, because otherwise you just smear it. But I'm gonna come in and make sure that I don't have any pencil in here. I didn't have any on the front, so we should be good. And then, because I want this to be like wood, we have to create um, the ends of planks periodically. Do some on the front here. Just a few. Just to give it the feel of wood. <clears throat> so I'm also going to come in. There's going to be, um, I'm going to darken the edge of my roof here. And create a little, just a little bit of shadowing underneath the eave. So I, I kind of put in a bit of an edge of an eave and then I'm gonna create that little shadowing and I'm going to bring some sh shading kind of along the edge here along the bottom a little bit, a little bit up under the window. So I'm gonna darken up my trim. A little darker on the bottom because it sticks out and then add a little bit of sh um, shading under there. And I'm gonna have bit of an eave here as well. And up over on this side. And 
I've got some um, shadowing up under here too because you know the roof is sh shading this area. And the same kind of up underneath the eave here. We're going to have a little bit of shading. A bit of shading kind of along the edges of this. The door trim. And then um, I just kind of start to darken up some of the edges and make them stand out. I'm gonna add another layer inside my door here. I'm gonna create some shadowing like underneath here, because that um, behind the eave here, that's gonna be in shadow as well. Again, I can use um, a little blending tool. When the ink is uh, still wet, I can blend a little bit with it. start darkening up my windows a little bit, add a little more layers because again, I don't just want to go in and be super dark right away. I want to be dark by adding layers and I want to create clean, solid edges. always always just darken little by little because I can always subtract and I can't or I can always add but I can't subtract the ink And now I'm going to have um, this little walkway coming down the hill. Okay, and on my walkway, I'm going to add a very light horizontal layer back and forth to kind of give it the feel of a pathway. Very soft, fuzzy. I like to add a little bit more value along the edges a little bit sometimes.
and on the hill I'm just going to add a little bit of shading around strategically. Again, as we're rounding along at the top, I want it to be a little bit darker. And then kind of fade out as it's coming out from there. little fence posts <laughs> and I'm going to have them get a little bit bigger as they come forward My fence posts are gonna be dark. Just giving some texture to my hill here. I want to, um, again, have it be a little bit darker along the edge of the path and fade out. Also, um, I'm going to create a little bit of a shadow of this fence.
And I'm gonna put in some grass clumps here along the the trail and uh, sort of on the post edges here. Just adding adding in some texture that this is like a hill or a grassy field. I'm gonna have some little pebbles in my pathway here as we go. And I need some more shading on this side of the hill to match that side. a couple little rocks in my grass here some grass clump by it kind of shade it out from there Some of our grass is kind of hanging out into our pathway here. All right, so we're gonna have, we're, we're putting in a palm tree. I tried to do a, several different types of trees and bushes for practice here. Put in our little palm tree here and I want this to have a palm tree texture. So my, my lines kind of come in this way be a little bit darker but then I want to put in that shading maybe a little tiny bit darker on this inside edge of our tree here
Then I'm adding in my palm frond centers, okay? So I want this one to curve a little different. And then from these, these are each of the fronds, right? And from here, I'm then going to add flicking. So are all the little leaves on each frond that kind of follow along the edge of my center. And then I'm gonna have them come up the back and kind of curve around and go down behind the center. And then I'll darken my center just a touch here. Add in a few more if I need. Have them come, a few of them come a little longer maybe. And then I will continue each of these five. I like to do them in odd numbers. And they're going to overlap. They're going to hang with uh, gravity. So I try to make them kind of follow that. If they're very curved or whatever. And once I kind of have the each of the leaves in, then I'll come through and darken the center. And of course, thicker at the base, kind of gets thinner as it comes out. And then tapers. And then again, I'll thicken up my center stock here. I'm gonna add a few more of these in the back. And again, these are flicked tapering lines. The curve needs to follow the flow of the palm frond and gravity. And then it's, these are essentially going out the back and down, right? Again, I'm, I let them overlap because in real life they would darken up my center. The angle of these are a little off for me, so I'm going to go in and add a few more. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna add in this outline of a hill or meadow or whatever we wanna think this is down over here. One of the things I do when I'm doing pen is I just like, I might want to add more in a lot of places, but I just add a little in the beginning and then I can go back. Like as I go, I can go back. And like right here, the hill is kind of, this hill is kind of humping up over the house. And I don't know if I like how that looks. So like, I'll just put this hill in behind the house and not add that. That's one of the beauties of adding my sketch with a light pencil first. 
Okay, so that gives me my mountain range there in the back. This is gonna be a little bush right here. So I'm gonna put that in with a little bit of a scrumbling technique here. But I am gonna come in and kinda shade that a little cause it is behind the house. Give it a little bit of a base behind it. <laughs> okay, so let's do, we're gonna add in this little shack or cabin calling this here. This one, I want to look more like bricks. And then the inside up here can look a little more like wood. We'll do strips. front will make look like brick. So I'm using the stroke of my pen to kind of come across this, like it's a little rolling hill over here. The directionality of my strokes can um, lend to the feel of the slope of the hill or the slant of the house or the mountain or whatever. So the, the hill behind, I want there to be a little bit darker shadowing of the hill behind to kind of push it back and behind the hill in front here.
Okay, so I'm gonna come and start um, adding in these trees back here. And I have this pine tree. And I'm going to shade in the trunk with some texture. And I want to create a um, jagged kind of bottom of this tree. And it's going to be in layers. And they can kind of be random. Okay, so now I have sort of the shape. Now I want to, the underneath of this layer as it comes out is going to be shaded a little darker than the top layer. And once I put in a little bit of shading, I can sort of deepen the very, the part going up under the tree would get deepened up a little bit more, less light darker shadow of course I do want there to be some value in the whole tree just darker where it goes underneath so I come and do that for the second layer as well Flicked tapered lines out from underneath there. Maybe I'll add a few little wisps on the edge. <laughs> pine tree then we're gonna come in and do like looks like kind of oak trees or something create our trunks And I have multiple here, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I've already got a space for the foliage of this tree kind of de, um, designated with my original sketch here so I'm kind of keeping the trunk out of that area Okay, and then I'm going to use that scr same scrumbling, which the scrumbling, I hold my pen more upright and I don't do circles. I 
go back and forth and random in all different directions, okay? And once I kind of have a shape, now the underneath of my tree is gonna be darker. So I start to kind of add more on the underneath and then sort of fade it out and up. And I'm gonna do the same on all of my little tree here. Okay, so now these two, I wanna differentiate that they're two different sections of this tree. So as I start to create my darkened scrumbling on the underneath, kind of lightening as it comes up to the top, I'm gonna to do that on both bundles and it's gonna kinda of start to segregate them out a little bit. I kind of have this little tree in here. Kind of defines its little shape. It's kind of like a juniper looking tree to me. And I'll just kind of scrumble in it a little. Maybe add a little bit of fuzzy background shading, give it a little more value away from this house, make it push back. We have another little oak tree thing here. I'm gonna make it branch. me a couple different trees to try and play with okay so now on our mountains here I am going to come here in the middle of this and I am going to just put in a bit of a squiggly line now on this side same as the sort of the shadow right we're gonna make it a little darker So I, I never really want things in my art to look like I outlined it. So I always try to make that sort of line um, or disappear into the shading, right? So I'll darken my shading a little bit on the edge and then I'll fade it out, sort of blend the outline away. So this mountain is behind the hill, so I want it a little darker than what I will end up making my hill. Because it's being shadowed, right?
sometimes like I start to get bored developing a section I might move away from it and develop a different section for a bit and then go back and that is perfectly acceptable um, I am going to add a very 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 light layer to the light side because I rarely want to just leave anything like white so very, very, very light layer. And I'm gonna kinda do the same through here. And I'm gonna do the same there as well. And you'll notice I'm darkening my value layer by layer. In this case, I happen to be using a little bit of rounded or oblong kind of strokes in my shading to, to kind of get the texture that I'm looking for. But I don't want it to look like I'm doing rounded strokes. It needs to be very, very light, very, very soft and fuzzy. Got a little harsh here, so now I gotta work to blend that away. So if I'm overlapping the pen, the edges of my pen work, then it's going to just darken, darken, darken that the line or the transition that I'm trying to blend. So typically I will try to not overlap too much when I'm trying to blend something away. took out this little piece of hill, so I'm gonna erase that. So it's a reminder, I'm on the very, very edge of my pen, my ballpoint pen here, in order to get this light fuzzy shading. And you guys, if you're struggling with that, you can go back to my shading practice video and practice your shading a little more, get some tips. But remember, it's all about the angle. If it's too dark, shift your angle it's too light, shift it the other way, but it's minuscule little shift. 
And remember that when you're shading, shade from your wrist. Sorry, scratch that. Do not shade from your wrist, shade from your elbow. And when you're sh shifting the direction of your arm, sh shift from your shoulder. Okay, so we'll be a little bit, um, a little tiny bit of shadow from the tree here. I'm also gonna darken up my trunk so it doesn't get lost in the mountain. Everything doesn't need to be an even perfect value either. I can let some aspects of that tree be lighter. So a lot of times when I'm working with ink pen, I start to think, okay, this isn't coming out. And you have this sort of awkward moment. And then if you just keep working with it to kind of keep going, then it'll start to finally blend and work. And so that is what I would encourage if you guys are feeling like, oh, I don't know, this isn't coming out or whatever, continue. As long as you start soft and continue soft and add layer by layer, you can continue to work with it and make it blend for some time. So my light side, I'm going to put in my light, light layer here. Same over here. I want that nice light layer. I got this a little dark over here and I want to try to blend that in. Okay, so now I have this hill that I've left white and I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to shade that. And we're going to start with a very light layer. 
And again, I don't want to lose my hill here. So I'm going to do a, the light layer throughout the whole entire hill and then I'm going to start to do a gradient shift from a darker at the bottom and shift it up lighter as we go. You guys know I like clean edges, so I try to do a very, very soft trying to like make it look like it's the texture of the hills going behind this tree so I try not to go over it um, with my strokes that are going this way for my background and sometimes I'll switch the the um, horizontal strokes to be like coming out from the tree and flicking out that way it looks like it's going back behind the tree okay so do the same kind of over here out from the house and out from this little juniper looking tree
So I'm gonna, just gonna start to put a little bit of texture into this hill for a, to give it a, um, a little bit of directionality change to make it uh, separate from the hill in the back a little bit more. And then I, just, I need to develop over here a little bit. So I kind of just define the, the edges of my house and my tree now that I've shaded kind of up and around them. Darken them up more so that they pop. So um, once I'm kind of where it would look like, okay, I could be done. Then I just kind of start going in and adding depth or darkening certain things that maybe got washed away a little or blended into or et cetera. Um, I think this is a step that gets overlooked sometimes, but it's pretty important. I'm gonna darken just along this ridge and then fade it out. Gives it a little more of a harsh sun shit or sudden change kind of there. Same with this one. Again, it's all just subtle, subtle little shifts. So you need to get used to working very slow. And in layers. Again, I just start adding a little bit of darkness and adding a little bit of depth to some places.
I didn't shade this little guy. We'll give our sky just a little bit of texture up here. Just a tiny bit. I just kind of want to define the edge of the mountain back here a little bit more. This is be hidden, hidden kind of behind this tree. Okay. So, you know, I could sit and I could fidget with this for some time, really. I could keep going, but I can also be done, right? Which I think, I think I am. Oh, 
Okay.